Hi, I'm Ken Crawford, president of the Alaska Conference, and I want to show you around my Alaska. I love it here. This is not the end of the world, but it's pretty close. I love Alaska. It's the greatest adventure you could ever imagine. If you want to find out more, go to our website, alaskaconference.org, and you'll find all kinds of information and stories on what Alaska is like. There's a constant collision between civilization and nature because we live next to each other. There's a feeling of remoteness. Not isolation, but remoteness. There is a vastness in the wilderness in Alaska. The mountains are more majestic. Nature is undisputed master. There's something about this country that sets off in me a craving for heaven. The living conditions are a challenge, I can tell you. But the needs in Alaska far outweigh the challenges of living here. This is one big place. Unbelievable. Alaska is the largest state. I can't believe the vastness of this part of our country. 230 Arctic villages and only 10 of them have been entered by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You know, the work isn't going to be finished anywhere until it's finished everywhere, and that includes these Arctic villages. There is absolutely no presence of our Adventist Church. Something has to be done. We need a plan. These are great people. These people have lived here for centuries. Because these villages are so remote, they're very closed societies, and it's very difficult to enter those villages unless we have some way to, to uh, reach into the village itself. I've never heard of the Seventh-day Adventist Church because the village where I was born and raised, we don't have a Seventh-day Adventist Church. Without anybody here, nothing happens. We've got about 3,800 members in all of Alaska, about 2,000 active members in the whole state. And most of those members are concentrated in the area where we've got half of our population. Over 50% of our population are in the Anchorage area, the Anchorage Bowl area. And so the rest of it is very vast, very remote, and those are the areas that are very difficult to reach. There are so many people in the outreaches of the villages that don't even know the gospel yet and need to be reached. We have a big, big, big challenge and because of the hugeness of the state. There's no way that uh, the small nucleus of people can uh, do this task, so we, we really need some outside help. Are you missionary minded? Do you have an adventuresome spirit? We'd love to have you come to Alaska and be a missionary and work with the folks here. We have 230 native villages that are unentered. We need you to come and help us. This is a tight little old boat, but uh, it's, it's close quarters. Three of us uh, stay on this boat for about a month. Just seeing God's creation, I can remember last Sabbath, um, it really left a real big impression on my mind. Of, we were coming up, um, back from the fishing up the Wood River, and uh, the sun was setting, and and there was beluga whales cresting in the water, and and it just I just stood out on the deck of the boat, and it was just absolute peace, and it was just amazing. A lot of good times happened in this boat. A lot of prayers, a lot of a lot of worries, a lot of a lot of second guessing decisions. But uh, it's all part of the experience, the fisherman experience. Uh, this fishery is kind of unique. I've, I, this is just a plotter here of the district. Um, uh, I've got a GPS here uh, with boundary, district boundary lines. And I communicate here with a VHF and a shortwave radio. A depth finder over there. It's pretty simple on this boat. Some of the, some of the big boats have, uh, have a lot more than that, but um, we find the fish by scouting around with the binoculars. <laughs> we're looking for jumpers. See, these salmon are running. They're pushing close up to the river, so we're looking for jumpers. We're looking for active fish, and uh, we're looking in places where we've caught them before. We're looking 
Sometimes they drive deep, sometimes they drive shallow, and we just got to figure that out. So a big part of finding fish has to do with communicating with other fishermen. If somebody's in the fish, we let each other know, and uh, we hope for the best for each of us. We're all helping each other out out here. And, um, you know, the fact is, when there's, when there's lots of fish, there's fish for everybody anyway, but uh, it's all part of the fun when, when there's not much to be found to, uh, to keep looking. And we'll we'll set out the net and see what hits, and if it, if it's looking slim, we'll we'll move elsewhere. So that's that's part of the nature of this fishery. Actually, when we're fishing, we're we're kind of roughing it on this boat. I I actually sleep right here where I'm sitting. This <laughs> this is my fancy captain's chair, and uh, when it's time for to get a couple hours of sleep, I just throw down this cushion and I pull out my sleeping bag from under the bench here, and I I lay out right here. Now, I I kind of like that because. Um, I can pop up and look out the windows and see if we're dragging anchor or if anything, you know, is... I like to keep an eye on things. But uh, I got a couple of crewmen here that that uh, follow me down here in the in the berth. Uh, this is, this is kind of where we live. Um, down here we've just got a couple of beds and and some a place to eat and get get warmed up and dry. I've got a little heater oven here. And a place to cook, and uh, and uh, we've read a lot of good books, and we've had some good conversations, and some real fine meals down in this little tight space. So keeps us dry. It's a it's an it's a mighty welcome place uh, when after a cold storm. I got lots of good fish stories, but I'll tell you one. When I was in uh, my sophomore year of college, I got I was uh, attending Walla Walla College at the time and I was enrolled in the aviation program. And between my sophomore and junior years, um, I came up here and I, I worked my heart out. But unfortunately, the fish didn't run very strong that year. And at the end of the season, my, my boss uh, basically um, apologized and said, well, here, here's what we made, and, and I looked at the check, and it was not enough to cover my airplane ticket home. So uh, it was suddenly I was realizing that uh, I may not be able to go back and attend college again. So I, I took the, my boss left, and I, and I stayed there um, on the beach, out at Nushigak Beach, and I spent the Sabbath walking around on the beach. and. Uh, I read the Bible a little bit, and I, and, I, and I ended up having a very genuine prayer, heart to heart with the Lord. And I said, I said, Lord, you know, I really feel that I should be going to college, and I don't know where I'm going to get the money for it. I'm halfway through the program. This is what I want. And as I continued to walk and pray, you know how it goes, I finally came to the place where I was uh, willing to accept His will no matter what. I can tell you I was there. I, I said, Lord, if it's not your will, fine. I'll just watch it play out. And uh, I'll, I'll shorten the story, but long story short, things worked out to where within a week of that day, one week from that day, I was looking at another check with my name on it for $10,000. And I, I was able, uh, I'll, I'll fill, in, uh, fill you in a little bit with some details, but I was able to get on another boat and, uh, by myself, and, and um, I was out there by myself, and the fish hit heavy, and I, I, worked, I worked for three days and four nights, and I, I hauled in a lot of fish, more than I had seen in four weeks. So I have learned to trust over and over and over, and, uh, you know, I uh, I think sometimes we feel like God's not really caring about uh, our situation, but that's when I that's when I need to remember these times when it, it was obvious that He did. And it's a fantastic story, but the, the the spiritual lesson there is the one that I learned that day on the beach. You know, to 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 know when I, when my when my heart is submitted to the Lord. But it was just a, a major bonus to see that He was in. Obviously, and in, and and in intentionally giving me the message that I should go back and finish school at Walla Walla College. It was just like when Jesus told the disciples to throw their net over the other side of the boat. It was it was just like that. I had just spent four weeks working the nets faithfully day after day and pulling up next to nothing. And uh, I went out there. There was only one other old man and myself out on the whole entire bay. 
the water was flat calm um, which was another miracle because I was fishing all by myself and if it was other than calm I would not have been able to haul all those fish in uh, uh, my boat just kept filling up and uh, I took load after load over to the to the tender and uh, it was amazing in the 1980s Alaska Territory became the Alaska Conference. It used to be the Alaska Mission. But because uh, we had got some money because of the oil boom in the 80s, uh, it became a conference. And that, that seemed like a good idea at the time, but uh, this, this really is a mission field. Now that we don't have the oil money anymore, what we're looking at is the reality that we've got approximately 2,000 uh, members of the Alaska Conference and 2,000 people and, and over, you know, barely over maybe two, three hundred um, unentered villages across the state that can only be accessed by airplane most, for the most part. Um, I mean, this is a mission and it's easy to see that uh, this is this like anywhere else, Papua New Guinea or whatever, uh, you know, this, there's remote locations, there, we've got a, a lack of resources, it, the conditions to operate here are, ex are difficult and expensive. We've got all kinds of basic living challenges and although beautiful and adventurous and everything else, this really is uh, a, a mission field and we could use hundreds of missionaries here. So if the Lord's putting on your heart to come to Alaska, call the Alaska Conference. For my Alaska, this has been Ken Crawford. Thanks so much for coming with me. If you enjoyed watching this series, if you're interested in what you've seen or what we're doing in Alaska, go to the Alaska website, alaskaconference.org, and there you'll find additional information.